Hello, I would like to welcome you to my, this little presentation of my house organ, which I've never really done before. I've uh, played a num made a number of videos of me playing this organ, of various pieces of music, in the various places where this organ has been. Uh, but this organ has a history. I'm afraid uh, I must apologise for the noise the blower is making uh, because it's uh, not a very well sound insulated blower box which I'll have to do sometime in the future it's just a simple chipboard box uh, that contains the, the motor with the, the turbine that produces the wind fills the bellows and makes it possible to uh, to play the pipes of the organ um, so this um, organ has uh, mechanical action throughout, um, one single keyboard, one, uh, one manual, and uh, the pedal board is, only has one octave, which makes it a little bit more difficult to play a lot of the organ repertoire. Uh, somehow my mind has become uh, adapted to this kind of uh, uh, system, so I um, transpose all the notes onto the bottom octave, or I play them on the second octave of the keyboard. So the um, the keyboard has uh, um, has 56 notes, uh, bottom C to G. Uh, the pedal board has no stop to its own, it merely has a permanent coupler from the manual to the pedal. These front pipes here, uh, this, this row of front pipes are all dummies. Uh, however, these six on each side uh, are real pipes from the four foot principle. Um, it is tuned uh, to uh, co modern concert pitch, that's to say A440 Hz. Uh, um, and to equal temperament. Um, this organ was certainly built in the 1900s by an unknown builder of London. Uh, there were quite a lot in those days. And it was sold second hand to the Anglican Church of St Andrew Rochester in Kent in about 1920 or 25. Um, there is a letter of an organist who played this instrument for many years at St Andrews, Rochester. Um, I don't possess this letter, but I've uh, been uh, told about it. The church had been forced to close during the Second World War um, after uh, widespread bombing damage. The church was repaired and reopened in 1952. The organ, that's to say this one, was at the time hand-blown and in poor condition. The pull-down pedals were not working. After a fundraising effort, repairs were carried out and an electric blower was installed. I assume probably the present one because it's quite old and would seem to be from about the 1950s. Around 1970, the local government authority in Rochester initiated a large-scale housing redevelopment in the area around St Andrew's Church and other parts of the town. After much deliberation, the diocesan church authorities decided to build a new and larger place of worship to replace St Andrew's, which closed in 1973 and the building was sold to the local Sikh community to become a temple. I believe the, uh, the, uh, the church is still there. I've uh, looked it up on the internet. Uh, uh, it's a very plain brick building. A local instrument maker bought this organ and transferred it to the attic of his large 16th century house at Cuxton, three miles outside Rochester. The buyer had rooms full of harpsichords, clavichords, spinets, various wind instruments and violins. 
He was described as a charming but eccentric fellow. Sadly, the orchid was never reassembled and the owner entered a nursing home in 1995. So very likely he's uh, deceased by now. The house was sold and the orchid seemed to have disappeared. Uh, knowing uh, the person who, uh, who was running the redundant organs rehousing company, uh, because I've shipped a number of organs from England uh, to the continent, uh, various places in France and, and Italy. Um, I was um, I was looking for an organ for my my chapel at Montmorillon. And I was uh, indicated this organ, which was already in pieces, in Gloucester, in a, in a former uh, aircraft, uh, uh, um, aircraft hangar, an enormous building containing uh, pieces of organs, ranks of pipes and whole organs, dismantled organs. It was described by the man who uh, uh, who uh, took me to this uh, to this uh, to this uh, hangar, become a warehouse, and he described it as a dog's dinner, a real mess. I found most of the small pipes in a, in a suitcase, all mixed up, all uh, uh, all you know, at random. So I bought this this uh, instrument for about uh, I can't remember exactly I would say about two hundred pounds, and I took it and installed it in Montmorillon, and I made some tonal changes. I think originally this organ would have had an open diapason, a stop diapason. Um, a Tennessee gamba of some kind, and a four foot principle, and uh, so it would be quite dull, um, okay for um, playing hymns for a, for a small congregation or even a few pieces. But I decided to uh, to 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 make, to make some to make some modifications. And when I bought this organ, I also bought a four-foot principal in spotted metal, which was probably from the 1950s, a nice bright stop. Um, I'm sorry, it was a two-foot fifteenth, which I made into the principal. I'll um, show you in a, in a, in a, in a just a moment uh, what it sounds like. This principal is nice bright principal. Uh, so it has an eight foot stop diapason, a very sweet toned stop. Then it has this, this four foot principle. The old principle I have um, transposed it as, uh, and uh, I made it into the 15th, which is it's a lot less bright than the principle, but still bright enough to make a good chorus. And then I um, drilled the soundboard uh, from Tennessee down to Bottom C, where the old string stop was, and I, I put in an octave quint, and I'll show you what that is, and that gives the effect a, a much richer harmonic effect of the of the whole organ. So, um, it's more, it sounds more of a, a, a little bit more like a Baroque organ than a Romantic organ, a very undistinguished one. When I installed the organ in Montmorillon, I, uh, I made this case. The, uh, the, uh, the cheeks of the console are original, although I painted, painted it all in, uh, in light blue, which is a bit nicer than the old original 
heavy pitch pine. And then I built uh, I made this case. I cut out these uh, the, uh, these uh, these pipe shades in in thin plywood, and uh, so that gives a little bit of a baroque effect. Um, this organ has been moved several times, according to when I moved house. I moved it to uh, to uh, La Quarena in. Uh, in the Vendée where I uh, bought a house and uh, installed a chapel and then uh, it went to two different places in Normandy and now it is in this house in the Mayenne it's not good to move an organ too much but it's been a necessity and in this house the ceiling was much lower, about this much lower, the difference between this mark here and this here, that's the difference in, in height. And I had to uh, reinvent the organ so that it would fit under this low ceiling. The alternative was to sell the organ somewhere or give it away and, uh, and carry on without an organ. So I made this sacrifice, the sacrifice of the height, the sacrifice of the rather nice proportion of the case. It's rather low and it's squat, but it's the best thing I could do. Now, to, uh, to show you a little bit about the, the tonal qualities of this organ, I will show you on these four stops. Um, there's the eight foot um, stop diapason. It's a very sweet sound, but it has a, a bottom octave that uh, goes all the way down to bottom C. The first, um, the first um, six pipes are horizontal behind as there was no other way of installing them within this height limit. So it uh, gives quite a nice I forgot to mention one thing you might be able to hear it in this um, uh, in this recording. I have devised a system with a microphone and an artificial acoustic. So uh, it gives, it mixes the sound of the pipes a little bit more than one would normally have in the very dry acoustics of a house, and gives a little bit more the, uh, the impression of playing in a church, which is rather nice, and it's uh, rather uh, something one can do with an electronic organ, but uh, with a pipe organ, it, uh, it works with with a, uh, with a microphone hanging over the pipes, going to an electronic box, which then goes to um, uh, a speaker, and that uh, uh, and that uh, takes the sound of the pipes to uh, to make the reverberation effect. And you'll hear it a little bit better when I draw this principle, the four foot principle with these nice uh, bright sounding pipes. <laughs> And then with the 15th, the two foot. 
this is the quint, which can be used in various different ways. Um, um, that gives a very, um, with the eight foot. said to be uh, to have been built by a London organ builder, the most uh, the, uh, the, the, the most well-known London organ builder was Sir uh, Bishop and Son, but I have no evidence that uh, this organ was built by a bishop. Um, uh, by of course by now it's um, it's very altered, but um, in the state in which I found it, there was nothing. Nothing remotely distinguishing about it. It just had a dull um, tonal scheme, which left me, which left me without the slightest uh, scruple about making these modifications to make it more um, suitable for playing baroque music. Had the organ been a Harrison or a Willis, uh, I would have been a lot more scrupulous about keeping it in its original state. But of course, a Willison or, or a Harrison, they built very few house organs, uh, very few organs which could fit, fit in such a low, um, a low height. Uh, because the sound of the organ is at uh, this level. I'll take the music desk out. And the soundboard is at this level. For many church organs, the soundboard is much higher leaving more room for the action, but, but also requiring much more height. Uh, this is the tracker action you, can, you might be able to see here. Um, I won't show you all the technical parts, uh, but uh, uh, by moving the music desk, uh, I have access to the mechanism to be able to, uh, uh, to regulate, the, uh, regulate the action that sometimes needs doing. Um, the draw stops um, are simply um, draw knobs that I bought from a, uh, from a, a DIY shop and they seem to have gone rather well. With only four stops there's no need to label them. And so there we are, uh, my little house organ. <laughs> <laughs> 